Hello, my name is Mark Hoffman. I am the Small Fruits Extension Specialist at NC State University. And today we are talking about site selection and site preparation and planting of muscadine vines. Um, so the topic of site selection preparation can be, again, split in two different parts. And this is what we're gonna to do today. So today we talk about site selection as one part and site preparation and planting as the second part. Um, and I want you guys to see and to understand what that really means. And I want you guys to think about a house and the house foundation first. So today we talk about the house foundation of a vineyard. And like a house, the better you prepare and the better that foundation is, the less problems you will have with your house or your vineyard later. Um, so if you have a really bad foundation or your foundation is not very well made, you will have problems with your house later as well. And that is the same in a vineyard. If you do not have a good site and you haven't selected your site well or prepared your site well, then your site selection, your vineyard will have uh, problems later on as well. So now that increases cost in your vineyard and it will lower the returns in your vineyard, sometimes to a point where your vineyard is not cost effective at all anymore. So now today we learn how to avoid this. And what we learn today is we learn how to select a good site, how to prepare a site for muscadines and how to correctly plant a muscadine vine. Those are the parts of your house or vineyard foundation, which you have to get right if you do wanna have a good muscadine crop over the next 10, 20, 30 years. So now first, let's talk about site selection. And there are three main take main take uh, main takeaways which you do wanna have at site selection. And that is, you need good air drainage, you need water drainage, and you need the correct pH. So now let's talk about those three a little bit more in, in, in detail. Your air drainage depends a lot on where you put the vineyard. So now this is very important if you are in a more hilly area or in an area which has some slopes. But even in a more flat area, there can be certain spots in a field where you have cold air standing or where you don't have enough air flow to let the cold air drain through your vineyard. Those are areas which you do want to avoid if you plant your vineyard. You want to plant your vineyard in an area where you have cold air draining through your vineyard in winter so that you do not get any cold damage. Muscadines are not very cold hardy. Usually temperatures lower than 10 degrees Fahrenheit will damage your muscadine vine even in a dormant state. This is extremely important, especially if you are in, a, in an area where you do have an early spring high temperatures and low cold night temperatures, which can lead to cold damage in vines that come out of dormancy slowly. So it is extremely important to know where you put your vine and how the air is flowing in your vineyard. That is really number one. So in this particular case, um, there are certain areas where you do not want to plant your vineyard. Those are the areas which are in red circles. Those are areas where you either have air, not good air drainage because there is vegetation uh, uh, in the way of the air to drain into like a cold area spot. Those are areas where you do have cold air standing in the, in the, uh, uh, at night. And there's are areas where you have a cold plateau. So those are not good areas for a vineyard. A vineyard needs to be grown or planted into what we call the thermal belt. Cold damage can occur on muscadines very often, especially in North Carolina and in parts of Virginia. And the further north and the further west you are with your muscadine vineyard, the more important it becomes that you select the correct site. Um, cold damage can manifest itself in a lot of internal damage, as you can see here, uh, all those black areas have developed around a cold damage crack in the trunk. And you can see that only those green and light brown areas are still living tissue. Everything else in this trunk is damaged by cold damage that occurred several years ago because this vineyard has 
been in an area where airflow was not provided. So now, airflow is extremely important, especially in northern areas in North, North Carolina or in western areas of North Carolina, Virginia. Now, the second part, which is also very important, is water drainage. You need to have a field that has very well drained water. So now this becomes more important in the eastern part of North Carolina, in Georgia and in South Carolina in the plains, because we do have a lot of areas where we do have standing water or even a hot sand layer about 30 to 40 inches below the surface, which then can lead to damage to your muscadine root system. And that will manifest itself in dying and dieback of your muscadine vineyard. So it is extremely important that you evaluate your field about 30 to 40 inches deep in the summer before planting with an auger. And you will evaluate that field for standing water or for hard pads. Usually you want to call your extension service and somebody from the extension service will help to evaluate you, your field with an auger. If you do have standing water in the field after a heavy rainfall, then that is a red flag and you will not, you should not be uh, planting a muscadine vineyard there. Our third part in site selection is soil pH. Soil pH is extremely important for muscadines to provide the, the nutrients. What you do on your, on, your, on your site is you're gonna have to evaluate your site for soil pH. You, you, do, you do that usually in two different depths. So you take combined soil samples in zero to seven inches depth, and then again from seven to 14 inches depth. Those combined soil samples should be also taken in the summer before planting so that you have enough time to adjust your pH with lime. Um, here in North Carolina, uh, soil samples can be, uh, can be uh, uh, sent to the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and, Cons uh, uh, and, and Consumer Service here in Raleigh. Those soil samples will get you back with a soil report. And on that, that soil report, you will find uh, your pH and the amount of lime that you will have to apply um, to your vineyard. It is extremely important that you do incorporate your lime before you start planting your vines and before you put the posts in. Usually lime is incorporated in fall, but we will talk about this a little bit more later on. So now we talked about water drainage, we talked about air drainage, and we talked about the pH. But there are other things which are also important if you wanna select your site. One of those things is, what is your market? Do you know where you want to sell your muscadine crop? That should be a question which you should ask yourself long before you're actually planning to, build, to, to, to plant a muscadine vineyard. Your market selection will have an impact on your site selection. A U-pick operation needs to be close to a road and it needs to have enough parking for your customers. A pre-pick operation doesn't necessarily need as much parking, but needs to be accessible. Wholesale operations need enough space for big machinery to go in, as well as processing operations need to have a lot of space for machinery and good accessibility for machinery. So depending on your market, your site will be a little bit different. One thing to consider also, if you do your, if you plant your muscadine wine is leave turnaround space at the end of a row. This turnaround space will allow for you to go in, into your vineyard with machinery that will help you managing and even harvesting your, 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 uh, your vineyard. Without this turnaround space, you will have a very hard time to turn around your tractor or turn around any other bigger machinery which you might need to manage your vineyard. Um, so now we learned a lot about site selection and the really basic foundation of our vineyard. Uh, so uh, if we do those right, we will have a good foundation for a house that will allow us to grow a very nice and, and well-established vineyard. So there are five things which you do want to learn. You need to have good air drainage. That is especially important in North Carolina and in Virginia. 
You need to have good water drainage. That is especially important in the Eastern Plains, as well as in South Carolina and Georgia. Your pH needs to be between 6.0 and 6.5. And your site needs to fulfill the market you do want to serve. And you need to leave 30 to 40 foot of turnaround space on each side of your vineyard for your machinery to get into your vineyard. So now we're talking about how to prepare the land. And yes, we are still talking about the foundation of the house. Land preparation is as important as site selection. And once you have selected a good site, it is imperative to prepare the site for muscadine production. And those preparation can be uh, roughly put into four different steps. The first step is preparing of the site. The second step is liming. The third step is row preparation. And the fourth step is post and planting. So now let's get a little bit deeper into this. Soil preparation uh, can, can have a lot of different steps. And it really can start with removing the vegetation of your site. That can be a very long uh, process. And after you removed all those vegetations, there will be still work to do. Uh, if you have large boulders in your site, you're gonna to have to remove those as well. So now that, that is mostly important in the Western part of North Carolina uh, or in the mountainous or Piedmont region. But however, those boulders will be in the way of your root system and they will have to be removed. Once you have removed the vegetation and your boulders, you rip your soil and then you level your soil for your lime application. After you have done this, you take a large amount of soil tests as we have described, and then you add lime according to the soil test to increase your pH. After that is done, you lay out your rolls, you flag post your locations, you mow your site, and then you establish a weed-free strip. So where are you gonna plant your muscadine vines? This can be done uh, with a set of tools, and as you can see here in this picture, you have a weed-free strip for your muscadine wines. And then you also have some uh, 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 um, flags which flag your muscadine, your post establishment. To do this, you need about uh, several tools. You can do this with wire, with some nails, a hammer, and some flagging tape, uh, some flags, and, and some measuring tape. And um, at the end of this, you will have a grid in which you will have uh, flags posted for your, for your, um, for your uh, um, posts, where you're going to post it. So I have made a little video to show that. And um, last time my computer crashed, so I'm gonna try this right now again, um, which I'm gonna show you. And uh, that will look like this. And, uh, we have some tests you see here we have we have uh, put in our rows and now we're flagging where our posts are going where our posts are going and we do this by having nails on one end of the row and another nail on the other end of the row and then we have basically at the end a grid so this is how you can do this on a small acreage farm these were one and a half acres uh, to get a perfectly set uh, type of um, uh, posts and your posts will have to go in with a post driver. Um, we do not recommend to auger in your post. Try to get equipment from somebody who has a post driver uh, who can po put in your posts because those posts have to be very stable in the ground. We do not recommend to post and to auger in your posts. You can cement in your posts. However, a post driver is, would be the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the tool of choice. You can auger in your muscadines uh, on a small acreage. That's what is recommended. And then um, very important is that you put your plant about three feet from the post. You can see here, usually end posts are about five to six foot out of the, out of the uh, surface and they're about three foot under the surface. And then your middle posts are about two foot below surface and about five to six foot 
of the surface. It is extremely important that this structure is very stable. Augering in a post will not be leading to a stable post structure later. Um, another important part is that your muscadine vine should be planted about three foot next to the post. We covered this in an extra video. Um, that will lead to a training structure later that will allow you to train one of your arms above a, a post. So now, if you want to plant your muscadine, make sure that your hole is big enough for the root system to cover, to, to cover and not to bend. It is important that your root system does not bend. So make sure that you do have a big, a big enough hole and that you have enough filling material later to put your plant into place. Usually you would put your plant, the entire root system under surface and make sure that some part of the trunk is above surface, above the first or second node. Uh, you will need a training stake, which is usually a bamboo stake, which you can use to, to train your plant later um, onto the wire. So we covered training and pruning very extensively in an extra Muscadine School video. So I would recommend you to watch that video if you want to know how to train a freshly plant Muscadine wine in your vineyard. For today, our, musk, our takeaway is that you select your site wisely, prepare your site correctly and plant next to the post and with enough space for your root systems to establish. If you do those three things, and you follow the rules which we just established today, then you will not have a bad foundation and a broken house later, but you're on your way to your multi-million dollar vineyard. If you wanna have more resources, please follow those links and please ask any questions in our chat. Thank you very much for your attention.